So this is going to be a little bit of a different video, but I just had a question for you guys, and uh, I don't know, things have gotten really weird around here in recent months, and so I have a question for you guys, but first I want to preface this by saying a few words on dreams. I've always found dreams to be highly fascinating, but even though it's 2017 and they're claiming we're entering this new era of neuroscience and they know so much more about your brain, science still cannot tell you what your dreams are, where exactly they're coming from, where it is that you go when you sleep. There are hundreds of competing theories about what a dream actually is, and none of them can be proven or disproven. And when you go try to look this up, one of the first things you'll be referenced to is a book by Sigmund Freud from 1913. So that's over a hundred years old. And they'll say, go read Jung and go read Freud. And it's 2017 and they still don't know. But interestingly, scientists are now using electrical stimulation to induce lucid dreams. So they're going to go in there and screw with it, but they still can't tell you what it is or why you're having it exactly. So that being said, <laughs> I have written a few things down. I've been keeping a journal here, and I've written a few things down because something very strange has begun happening in this house, and it's not something that I've experienced ever before in my entire life. And it started, strangely enough, on the night of 9-11, so a couple months ago, and it wasn't really that big of a deal seemingly, but I woke up and I had a dream about an airport. Just a random dream where I was in an airport. And I just want to say really quick too that I'm the kind of person that can remember my dreams. I'm pretty good at being able to recall them for most of the next day. Whereas I know some people, they can't remember their dreams that, to the point that they don't think they have any, although the scientists who still can't tell you where your dreams come from claim that we all have dreams for six to eight hours a night on average. I don't know, but I can usually remember mine. I woke up, I remembered I'd had a dream about an airport, and Aaron's like, oh, that's strange. I had a dream about an airport too. And it's weird because we never, I mean, we didn't, it's not like we went to the airport the day before. It's not like we watched a movie that featured an airport or we talked about traveling before bed or anything like that. There's no stimulus or whatever that should have then informed our dreams at night specifically about an airport to both of us. You know, sometimes you watch a movie right before bed and then you have a dream about it. For me, that particularly happens sometimes when I watch a scary movie, but that's not what this was. Nobody even discussed airports. They were not, there was no airport talk going on or anything like that. We both happened to dream about an airport. Okay, so that's no big deal, right? So we go into the kitchen to get breakfast and my daughter comes out there and she overhears us talking about how we both dreamed about the airport and she goes, oh, I had a dream about an airport too. Which is extra strange because my daughter doesn't, she's been to the airport maybe once in her whole life and she is definitely not interested in ever flying. And so, for her, there would be extra no reason to dream about an airport. And so now, all three of us on the night of 9-11 randomly dreamed about an airport. And so I decided to just write this down in my book, just to keep kind of a tab of, that's a little strange. So, several weeks go by. I don't really think about this much further. We're not having daily conversations where we check in, like, what did you dream about last night or anything like that. But... On October 29th, so several weeks after that, I woke up after having had a dream about a big fancy old hotel, which was really cool in my dream. It, it was one of those turn of the 20th century kind that has the big ornate lobby and all the really neat woodwork. And I was walking through this old hotel and I happened to be walking around it with my friend Jason, who I was friends with back in, in my sophomore year of college and then a few years after that and we probably haven't spoken in over 10 years. But my friend Jason is suddenly in this dream for a small part of it walking around with me 
and we're looking at how cool this old hotel is. That's basically it. And then at some point my mom shows up in the dream and there's all these little soaps. My mother is one of those people that she loves going to hotels because she loves that they give you little free miniature soaps. She she's a sucker for that stuff. And in my dream, there was this huge selection of rainbow little objects, little soaps and shampoos and stuff, and she was collecting all of these in a bag. I know this sounds really weird, but it's you're going to see why I'm mentioning it. So I wake up and Aaron starts to tell me about his dream where he was in an old hotel walking around and he starts describing it and it sounds exactly like my dream to the point that he's walking around it with his friend Jason and he has a group of friends from high school that have been his friend for a long time and so they're in his dream sometimes because it's just they're his friends and so that's not really the abnormal part it's just He's in an old hotel walking around with his friend Jason. I'm in an old hotel walking around with my friend Jason. So now I'm asking everyone else in the house, did you have a dream about an old hotel? And my mom's like, I didn't have a dream about an old hotel. But what I did have a dream about was an old manor that I bought. Kind of similar, right? In a way, if you think about it. And in her dream, get this, she's collecting little stained glass objects, little stained glass ornaments and figurines and stuff like that. Little, what is stained glass? If you think about it, right? Rainbow. It's rainbow objects. So in her dream, she's in a big old place and she's collecting rainbow objects. In my dream, I'm in a big old place and my mom is collecting in a bag rainbow objects. I mean, the specifics are slightly different, but the characteristics are the same. It's as if we all drew from a hat of different characteristics and then they played out specific to ourselves in the way that our minds interpreted those characteristics that we got to have a dream about that night. Do you see what I'm saying? And so that's now twice that I have shared a dream, basically, in a way, with two other people in my house. And it's, again, this isn't based on the night before I went to an old hotel, or I talked about staying in an old hotel, or I watched a movie featuring an old hotel, or any of that, in probably the days leading up to this. It's just not something that comes up. Oh, hey, what about some old, you know, early 1900s hotel? I mean, it's just not the kind of thing that average will come up in a conversation in this house. I mean, just saying. It's starting to get kind of strange, right? So then nothing happened for a little while longer. And then on the 8th, oh yeah, on the 8th. Sorry, I have to remember each detail here. That's why I wrote this down. On the 8th, I woke up after having had a dream that I was in some old apartment building. There was a dinner party going on or some kind of, maybe it was Thanksgiving type of thing where everyone's gathered together and there's lots of food on the table, kind of buffet style, and everyone's chatting. And I had a plate and I just kept scooping mashed potatoes onto this plate. And I'm not a huge fan of mashed potatoes. It's not like for me, mashed potatoes are the thing. I just, I know some people that are absolutely obsessed. That's their favorite food. It's not really for me. I, I'm not a huge mashed potato fan. I mean, I, I, I don't have anything against mashed potatoes. I'm just saying, it was weird. It was like all of a sudden I was in Close Encounters of the Third Kind and I was going to start saying, this means something, this is important, but I didn't do that. But I just kept putting the mashed potatoes on my plate, almost robotically, filling up this plate with a cartoonish amount of these mashed potatoes, and then I started profusely apologizing to everyone for taking all the mashed potatoes and, and apologizing for eating too much which I didn't even ever eat them. In the dream, I never even ate the mashed potatoes. It's just me doing this and apologizing for it over and over and over. So this is this weird dream I had. I wake up, I tell Aaron about it, and he freaks out and he says, that is just like in my dream. <laughs> just like in my dream, where Aaron had a dream that he was at a mall food court or some kind of place like that where there's lots of food choices and he was hanging out with his friends and he just kept getting food because he felt like he was insatiably hungry, he was starving and he just kept getting the food and eating the food and then apologizing 
for eating the food to his friends over and over, profusely apologizing. Different setting, same exact concept in the dream. This is what's been going on. But that's not the last one. I didn't decide to make this video about this until the 11th, the night of 11-11, when this happened for a fourth time. I had a dream this time that we were living in our old apartment complex and Aaron had bought it and was going to turn it into a theme park. And I was part of some roving gypsy band that was there to perform and do all this stuff for this theme park that he was opening. And we were all sitting inside one of the units looking out the window and every day at a certain time in my dream this giant spider that was the size of a medium dog would come ambling down the street. We never saw the spider's face or his head or anything, but we saw the spider itself and it was large enough that it was taller than the curb. It was big and it had a, a really furry body, kind of looked like the body of a fawn almost in a way. The fur pattern, it looked like a deer, but it had those gangly spider legs, kind of like a giant wolf spider basically. It almost looked like a, a Jim Henson puppet or something. It wasn't scary. It was just bizarre. And in the dream we told Aaron, hey man, you're going to have to go take care of your spider because if you don't, you're going to scare away all the kids and stuff. They're not going to want to come here. And so we all go out there, follow him out there because he's going to catch this giant spider and put it in a box. And we get up to it. And when we get up to it, we notice that it's not actually a spider. And in my mind, I thought the line, it looks more like a fox or a meerkat. I'm well aware of the fact that foxes and meerkats don't look anything like each other, and also don't look anything like giant spiders. Well aware. But that's what happened. It, we got up to it and it sh it's like it shape-shifted or something, and it was not a spider, and it hadn't been the whole time. It was actually, again, it was a fox or a giant large meerkat. I know, that's just really, really weird. It was, it was funny. It was mostly just funny. It was a weird, funny dream, but anyways. I wake up the next day and I immediately tell Aaron this, that I had a dream about a shape-shifting spider, blah, 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 blah. I did not say that it shape-shifted into a fox or a meerkat. I just said there was a shape-shifting spider. I just kind of ran down the details pretty quickly. Aaron had a dream that there was a, an animal loose in our backyard that he had to go catch. And he said to me, in my mind, I was thinking it was a fox or a meerkat. He said that to me. I had not said to him what I thought the stuff was, but he said it to me is the same thing in my dream. It wasn't even like the spider looked like a fox or a meerkat. It was that I had that specific thought, right? Which was the same thought he had. Although in his dream, he walked up to it and it shape-shifted into a bear. So, different, but the same. Do you see what I'm saying? So that is four times now that at least two people in this house have shared a dream now. And it isn't, I'm telling you guys, it is not based on movies we watched the night before or conversations we had. I mean, how often do people have conversations about meerkats? I'm pretty sure it doesn't happen all that often. I also had a dream about two months ago. It was after the first dream we had about the airport, but before the other dream. In it, Aaron and I were trying to find our way out of this really big dilapidated old building that had, I mean, it was really run down. The walls were leaking, the roof was leaking, the floor was covered in water. It was real dingy and dirty and there were broken boards and stuff just laying around in most of the rooms. And it wasn't scary. It wasn't a scary dream. It just was a messed up place. And I remember there being this really bossy, angry Asian woman there who was wearing, she had bright red lipstick on. And that's what I remember about her the most. And she was barking at us orders or something, but it was in a language that we didn't speak. 
And I told Aaron, if you want to get away from this woman, if we really want to escape from here, we're going to have to go to sleep and go to the level beneath this level. That's the words that I used. I didn't say go to another dream or go somewhere else. I said we need to go to sleep in this dream so we can go to the level below this level. And that's the way to get away from her. And so it's just like the movie Inception where there's a dream inside of a dream. But we haven't watched that movie in probably over a year. I mean, we haven't talked about it in a long time. I mean, we've both seen it. But this was in my dream. And so I took control of this dream and I had him lay down. We both went to sleep and we woke up in, I guess, the level beneath this level. And we were sitting in a room and we were talking about it. And he was telling me everything that he saw in the dream. And it sounded exactly like what I saw in the dream. And in it, as we were talking, we both knew that we were still asleep somewhere else in another level above the one we were in where that lady was and that we had together escaped her by doing this. So that was also very strange. And I've got some other ones that I've had recently too that are really, really weird. But that's, I guess, it's probably another story for another time. I just, I, I have not had this happen to me before and I've pretty consistently lived with other people most of my life. I've got my theories, but I don't know if I'm ready to have a whole discussion about them on camera, but something really strange is going on, it seems to me like. And I don't know if any of you are experiencing this too, or anything remotely like it, or you have before, if it meant anything in your life. So far these things seem really random, other than just we're sharing dreams. and. You know, the odds, I feel like, of sharing a dream with someone, even if you're super close to them, is still got to be pretty small and negligible, considering that dreams are supposed to be infinite possibility. Millions and millions and millions of variables that could be in your dream. So to even have one that's the same is pretty crazy, but to have it be that specific... And the thing is, is that... I've just really been having a hard time sleeping for a while. I stay up really late. I work constantly. And so I hesitate to think that's it, though. I mean, I've gone through periods of insomnia before, back during college, you know, finals and things like that. So I don't know that that can really explain this. I don't know what to say. Uh, after our dog passed away recently, which was really, really sad, um, he was sick for a very long time, and after he passed, my daughter and I both had dreams about the dog, but they were on different days. They were kind of similar in what happened in them, but it was at different times, and it almost, in that instance, it didn't feel the same at all. It felt like it was just the dog's way of saying goodbye or our way of saying goodbye to the dog. I feel like that's different though because I feel like when people pass away it is not uncommon to have dreams about them because they're definitely very much on your mind and there could be other things going on there. I mean that really could be a way of saying goodbye in that space, you know, um, where you go when you're not fully conscious. I don't think there's a lot that we do know about the dreams. I think we all know pretty much what happens in a dream. You see images and things happen. But I, I don't think science has really gotten all that much closer into discovering exactly what the purpose is of a dream, what it really even is. And they'll just tell you what it is. It's flashes from your subconscious dealing with things that happen during the day. But like I said, in these instances that I'm saying, these things didn't happen during the day. It wasn't things that we watched in a film. It, you know, it wasn't something we talked about the night before. I don't just have conversations about giant shape-shifting spiders all the time. I mean, that just isn't really... So, what's really going on? I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me figure it out.
What do you guys think?